we're so glad that you could join us today. We're going to start off with our memory verse. Are you ready? Here we go. We have everything we need to live a life that pleases God. It was all given to us by God's own power. 2 Peter 1 verse 3. Let's do it again. I'm going to slow it down so you can follow after me. Here we go. We have everything we need to live a life that pleases God. It was all given to us by God's own power. 2 Peter 1 verse 3. How'd you go? I know you'll get it in no time. And right now, it's time for our message. Hey guys, so it's time for our message. And you might be thinking, well, what is going on with the armor of God? We've been looking at the battle that we're in and the armor that God gives us to protect us. But now we're gonna start looking at something a little bit different. Now we know we're in a battle. Now we know we've got armor. We're going to look at my purpose. What is the purpose that God gives us? And how does God help us achieve it? So in 2 Peter 1 verse 3 that we just did for our memory verse, it tells us that our purpose is to live a life that pleases God. And that Bible passage tells us that God gives us everything we need to help us do that. So what do we need? What are the tools that we need to live a life that pleases God? Well, do you know what? We're not the only ones who have ever asked that question. So turn to your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now that's in the New Testament. We've got Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians. And whilst you turn to it, I think there's a bit of a delivery for me. I've got a letter. Have you found the passage? Have you got it open? Now, what we're about to read was originally a letter. Let me open it. This letter was sent from the Apostle Paul to the church in Corinth. And look, our envelope says to see three kids. And it's a bit like God sending us a letter through time, space and place. It's like he's writing a letter just to us. He's answering our questions. So, Let's have a look. How does he start this letter? In my version of the Bible, it starts like this. My friends. And I kind of like to read that in the letter here that says, my friends at C3 Kids. That's a great way to start a part of a letter. And it means that what he's about to tell us is because he likes us, we're his friend, and he wants to help us because he's someone who's already encountered Jesus and he wants us to do the same. Do you know, it's always good to listen to people who care for us and have encountered Jesus before we did. So, then what? Oh, look, he says in verse one, you asked me about spiritual gifts. Yes, Paul, we did. We did ask you about spiritual gifts. Well, we used a different word, didn't we? We asked you about tools that God gives us to help us live a life that pleases him. So these are the gifts that help us fulfill our purpose, to live a life that pleases God. So then what does he say? He says, I want to remind you of something. Before you knew Jesus, you were led by other things. Now those other things might be our greed, our selfish desires. But now he says, just the same way that we were led by those things, now we can
can be led by the Spirit. Do you know what that means though? It means that wherever we're going, whatever we're doing, the Holy Spirit wants to lead us to fulfill our purpose. Now, these tools are to help us please God. They're a bit like a tool set. And over these next weeks, we'll look at each tool and ask, what is it? What do we use it for? And how do we use it? You can see, I brought my big toolkit here. Well, let's tell the truth. It's maybe not mine, but I'll let the person who owns it one of the days tell you whose it is. So, the Apostle Paul tells us more about these tools. Let's have a look at verses 5 through 7. There are different ways to serve, but all these ways are from the same Lord. And there are different ways that God works in people, but all these ways are from the same God. God works in us all in everything we do. Something from the Spirit can be seen in each person to help everyone around them. So that tells us that these tools don't belong to us. They're given to us by the Holy Spirit to help us achieve our purpose. What was our purpose again? Can you remember? Yes to live a life that pleases God, which especially includes serving others. So what are these tools? Well, Paul tells us, let's have a look at verses eight to 11. So you will see that there's wisdom, knowledge, faith, power to heal the sick, power to work miracles, prophecy, recognizing God's presence, tongues and interpretation, and all of these come from the Holy Spirit. Now, in the letter that I've got here, at the bottom, I kind of made a little bit up because I was like, you know what? If Paul was writing this to us, he'd probably say at the bottom, I hope that helps answer your question. Love Paul and all of those who have encountered Jesus before you. I'm gonna put my letter away now. Sometimes we might need a few of the tools together. Like we might need faith and the gift of healing. Or we might need a word or prophecy and the wisdom to know when or how to bring it. So as we go into these next weeks, we want you to be ready to get your tool set from the Holy Spirit. Now, to be able to do that, I need to ask you a question. In fact, two questions. The first is whether you have said yes to Jesus and asked him to forgive your sins and invite him into your heart. If you haven't done that, just as we spend a few minutes, we'd like to pray for you. And if you're in one of our kids' rooms, or with, whether you're watching this online with maybe your parents or folks that you know well, then you might just wanna say, that's me. You might put your hand up or you might just say, that's me. And then the people around you can pray for you. That's the first question. The second question is, have you been filled with the Holy Spirit? Because we can't get a tool set from him if we're not filled up with the Holy Spirit. Or maybe you feel a little bit empty and you want to be refilled. Then again, in a few moments, that's a great opportunity for those around you to pray for you so that the Holy Spirit can fill you up. And then do you remember what Paul said? Just as
as easily as we were led by our own selfish thoughts and feelings, we can now be easily led by the Holy Spirit, moment by moment and day by day. So right now, we're just gonna take a moment and we're gonna pray. And if you wanna put your hand up so someone can come pray with you, you do that. Because as we journey through this next few weeks, we want you to receive everything that you can from the Holy Spirit. Shut out all distraction. If you find that easier to shut your eyes, then you shut your eyes. And I'm just gonna pray. God, right now, we just invite you into this moment, into this place. God, for those who haven't said to Jesus, will you forgive me of my sins? Take away the wrong things that I've done. And will you come into my heart to live? God, right now, we just speak that this is that moment for them and that you would come and respond to what their heart says and live in them. And then God, for those who want to be filled or refilled with your Holy Spirit, we just pray that as your presence just comes in whatever room they're in, that as your presence just comes in whatever room they're in, that the Holy Spirit will come and fill them up from the top of their heads to the tips of their toes. God, thank you that you give us the power to live a life that pleases you. And we want to be ones who are so full of your spirit that you are able to lead us so easily as we live our lives, that we can touch others for you, that we would be able to see miracles happen before our very eyes. Holy Spirit, as your leading comes so often as just a little whisper. We pray we would be ones who are always listening, going, God, what do you want to do in this place or with this person? God, that you would teach us to hear your whisper all the time as we go through our days. And that as you come and fill us up afresh, that we would live that life that is so full of your power, that your words, well done, your smile that says, I am pleased with your life, would be ours. God, we thank you that you don't only call us to be led by you, but you give us everything we need to live it. So as we just spend a little bit of time, we pray that in your presence, that your Holy Spirit will come afresh. God, give us dreams, give us pictures. God, use our imaginations. God, maybe you'll give us a word or a scripture. Maybe you'll give us something that we can pray for someone. So many tools that you have for us. God, we want to say we are listening. We are here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And wherever you are right now, just as we've prayed, just spend a little bit of time just being quiet, just being still, letting God speak to you. You might have a book that you can write down if God gives you a word or a draw if God's given you a picture. But that's a part of his leading. That's a part of his speaking. 
So as I'm going to be quiet and the screen's going to go blank, just spend time in his presence and know that he loves you and know that he's drawing near to you right now. Amen.